Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. My name is Christopher Brown, and I will be your host for this exciting journey. This episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the SUMA conference in Saskatoon earlier in April. Our show is dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada, and our goal is to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Today's guest is Regina Councillor Bob Hawkins. And I want to start with the million-dollar question that I've asked every municipal politician who's ever come on the show, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Oh, I think, I think it came from the time I was young. I was raised in a household in which my parents were uh, involved in volunteer work in the community. My father for, with a hospital uh, board, my mother with school board. So always there was a sense of that you should be involved in the community, in our home. Um, in addition to that, uh, it was a pretty political home. We had an understanding of how government worked and that interest translates into uh, getting involved politically one way or another as a volunteer or even just as an interested spectator. So the, 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 it's just an interest in community community problems and even on a bigger level, provincial and national issues. You bring up a good question and you talked about how your family talked about politics. You have to your family talked about governance. Now, I talk to a lot of municipal politicians who say they talk about provincial politics growing up or federal politics and not really municipal. Like, they might have known the mayor, they might have known the councillor. For you, when politics and government was discussed, was it municipally or was it the other levels of government? Well, it was certainly provincial and federal, but it was also municipal. Okay. I grew up in Dauphin, Manitoba, a fairly small town. Well, My now family's from Dauphin, Manitoba. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> It's now called a city, but really when yeah. I was there, it was a town, and uh, uh, the local issues were just part of the fabric of, of living in that community, and there was a local radio station, CKDM, a local newspaper, the Dauphin Herald, so uh, as I mentioned, my parents were involved with the school board and hospitals locally, uh, so there was always a local interest because that was the community where you were living. What brought you to Regina, and mm -hmm. what brought you to the sort of in the Coles Notes version of it? What brought you to Regina, and what brought you to City Hall? Uh, well, Besides it was a an long election. road. <laughs> it was a long road. I uh, I studied internationally law for a number of years. I came back to Canada. I uh, 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 taught law in, in at Queens and at Western in London, Ontario. Got into university. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let the Western slide because I'm Queens uh, oh, okay. alumni, so okay. it's okay. Uh, when I, I got into university administration, and that that took me to Antigonish, Nova Scotia, to North <laughs> Bay, in Ontario, and then finally, uh, uh, I was asked to be the president of the University of Regina, uh, almost 20 years ago now, and I thought it was a chance to come home, so I came home. Uh, to, Re to Regina, which wasn't often, but it was close enough. And um, when that finished, I uh, went back to teaching in the university for a time in law, but I had time on my hands and we'd always been interested in politics and there was a municipal election coming. It was a beautiful fall in 2012 and I said, I'm gonna see what it's like to knock on doors. So, so not, it wasn't sort of a, a, a burning sense that there was a local issue that I had to solve, it was more of, an, more of a sense of being involved in the community. I'd been involved in the community in Regina through my local community association. We'd done good volunteer work, but it's just a decision one day at a certain point in my life. I had time and uh, family. Had you ever, ever considered prior to that 2012 election that you would put your name forward, or was it we you spoke off the uh, off the record before we started recording that you had retired. You were from the pres the school, the president of the University of Regina. Then you went to teaching, so you got involved. H prior to that election, had you ever considered it, or was this a okay? It's something I can do now. Uh, 
have to go back a long way. When I graduated with my undergraduate degree from the University of Manitoba in 1972, that summer I got on a bus and went down to the United States. I was interested in American politics. I just walked in the door of the McGovern campaign. McGovern was running for president and I stuck around there as an advanced person that fall and uh, when that was over, uh, I came back to Canada and I ran in a provincial election in Manitoba, lost mightily. And, th and that was the only active involvement I'd had in politics until uh, 2012 in Regina when I ran municipally. So there was a little bit of a corner in the early part of my life before marriage, before a career got going, in which I took a little bit of a fling at politics. Okay, there's a lot that I would want to unpack with that, but we only have a few minutes, so I want to jump into this. In 2012, you get elected. Yes. Your first time as a city councillor. Now, in Regina, you were elected at different wards, I'm assuming. You're not elected at, a, at large. Or at, I was elected in Ward 2. That's ward correct. Two. You have to balance the needs of your ward with the needs of the city. You have to look at every issue as a city issue, not as a ward issue, as a city issue. How do you balance that? And how do you think people should balance that? Because we always hear that people want to just look out for their people who've elected them, not for the entire city. How do you balance the needs of your community versus the needs of the people in your ward? Well, you're elected to do both jobs. And sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you have to say to your community, well, this is what the city needs, the city of which you're a part, the city where your children and your grandchildren are going to grow and live. You have to, we have to do this for the city. There are other times when your community has particular special needs and your residents have particular concerns that you can address those. But by and large, you do have to make a judgment call on every issue that comes before you, what's best in the best interest of Regina with respect to this issue. If you're doing your job well, there's not usually a conflict. Usually what's in the best interest for Regina is the same as what's in the best interest for the residents of Ward 2. Uh, if Ward 2 has special problems, I'm in a place where I can articulate those to the council and uh, they'll help me with those special problems. Do you find that, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna rephrase this question. There's a lot of new councillors out right now, whether it be in Saskatchewan, whether it be in Manitoba, Alberta, Ontario. You've been in the game for 10 years now. What advice would you give to those councillors who were just elected? Because that, those first few years on council is a big learning curve for a lot of people. You went through that learning curve. What advice would you give to those new councils, whether it be here in Saskatchewan or another province or territory? You're right, it is a very large learning curve. My advice is to remember that you're acting in the best interest of the city, to pick several interest issues that are of interest to you for one reason or another, focus on those at first uh, while you're getting broadening out your interests. You've got to do the reading, there's no, no question about it. You've got to answer the phone when you're res or the emails uh, when your residents phone. I would also advise them not to be too, too uh, overtaken by social media. Social media is a problem, has a tendency to, uh, you hear a few loud voices, has a tendency to get you to react before you've thought through the, through the uh, problem. Take time to think hard about uh, the problem. You also have to remember that you're not gonna make everybody happy. And as you go along, you might make quite a few people unhappy one way or another. But if people in general see that you're working for the good of the city, they'll forgive a few mistakes, they'll help you out, they'll recognize that you're doing your best. So that's the perspective I'd, drop, I'd adopt. The other thing made a difference for me, on my early council, uh, council there were several senior councillors who were great mentors. And I sometimes argue with them and disagree. I find out now that I'm at the other end of that road that I think they might have been wiser than I thought. <laughs> and uh, I may have just paid enough attention to them that I survived. So at the end of the day, governance is something that can either go two ways, good or bad. Yes. In your mind, what does good governance look like? 
Good governance means serving the needs of the community uh, carefully, thoughtfully, having read the material. As a counselor, you're in a special position that normal residents don't have. You get the material, you have to create time to look at it. Most residents don't have that luxury. They're occupied with family and careers. They assign you the task of making the community better for them and for their families. I think good governance is uh, produces those good results. Um, I think good governance as well means being patient sometimes, uh, recognizing that you can't get your way all the time, maintaining good uh, relationship with your other counselors, making sure that the council as a whole functions in a collegial, respectful way. Those are hallmarks of good governance. And then, of course, good governance means openness. It means honesty. Uh, Integrity is important, though uh, transparency is important. Those fundamental values are reflected in good governance. Governance is a funny word. It sounds like a big, complicated word. In fact, it's just being a decent human being and doing a, doing a decent job. So I guess my last question for you is this, because this is the million dollar question. In your opinion, what makes the city of Regina a, such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? The city of Regina has changed completely. I've lived in Regina since 2005, so in those 17 years, the city is dramatically different. It's a different city. It grew from being a big town to a small city. The population is much more diverse and has gained strength through that. Uh, we've seen many immigrants come in. Also, Regina is an opportunity. It's still a city where a lot of things can be done. So recently, we've had to think about building new above ground infrastructure like a pool, a library, uh, a, a new entertainment arena complex. Um, those kinds of opportunities don't come along in, in many communities. They've come along here and we have to think hard about how to make the best of it. The other kinds of opportunities we have in Regina as we've seen, uh, Regina is in an agriculture area, produces the food that the world wants, uh, we have minerals that the world wants. There's all kinds of economic opportunity here. And then on top of all that, there's a great quality of life. We've got a good university here. You can get to work probably in six minutes or anywhere else you want Want to get to work. You're close to nature if you like to go out into nature. Uh, it's a really, it's a, I believe, a strong and safe community. Great place for families to live. Uh, good people. Um, there's all kinds of opportunity here. It's, it's at the beginning of the road, not at the end of the road. Count, mm -hmm. Counselor, thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate your interest in asking the questions. Always. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up, and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content show updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.